Hello everyone. Before we get started, we have to pay the bills real quick. So I would like to tell you about Anchor. Anchor is your free all-in-one podcast application. With Anchor, you have creation tools built in to record and edit your episodes straight from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute the podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple, and many other platforms. It even lets you monetize your podcast with no minimum listenership. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now. We use it, and so can you. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, and welcome to Going 19, episode 19. Today, we start part two of Stephen King's It, covering chapters four, five, and six. I am Ed. With me are Allie and Amber. Let's start the show. I didn't really do a um, like a plot summary because all the ones I found were really long and really detailed, and I didn't feel like reading all that nonsense. Yeah, for three chapters. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know that we really need one because you know it's basically uh uh. Who's to start with? Ben. Ben has a flashback. Uh, then uh, Bill. Jesus, I can't think of anybody's names. Um, yeah, Ben has a flashback. Then Bill. Then uh, Eddie Mike. dies, and then Mike has a flashback. I mean, that's pretty much how that goes. And all three of them have horrible things happen to them. <laughs> well, that's every chapter. So <laughs> kind of the premise of the book but <laughs> yeah it's, you know it's it's so horrible he couldn't even name it it he couldn't even name, <laughs> couldn't even name it yeah. so yeah you know you know me i just did some highlighting so i figured i'd just run through that yeah i'm gonna go back to the beginning um where did we where's the chapter start one one something right well, our page numbers are different. Ah, crap, are they? That's not... Yeah. Slightly. Are you guys the same, or is everybody different? Um, All right. I guess we'll find out, huh? <laughs> I, I, I start on 139. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm on 157. You have the bigger b- book? Yeah, I have, um, uh, it was published by Hotter and Stoughton. No, yeah, yeah. Sure. Hotter and Stoughton. I, have no uh, idea. <laughs> I think I have Scribner. So, uh, mm. well, you know, we're starting chapter four, so everybody go to chapter four, I guess, whatever page that is. Yeah. After the first interlude. So, Allie, have you read this before? I think. A birdie told me it was uh, a long time ago. Yeah. Um, so I read it for the... It was actually the first Stephen King book I ever read. And I read it in, I think, middle school. It's a good way to start. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it's a bad way. Uh, it's hard to top that one if that's your first book. Like I, that's kind of what I found. Yeah. But <laughs> it's, well, it's been nice rereading it because of that. There are ways to top it, but it's not easy. Yeah, I've told her about the Dark Tower series. <laughs> you know, the stand's right up there with it, I think, too. Oh, that's true, yeah. I don't, I don't know which, I don't know. If I want a, if I want an island, I don't know which one I'd pick between the two of them. Uh, no, I'd choose the Dark Tower, I'm sorry. No, no, I mean the stand and... Uh, oh, it? it yeah. Mm, that's a good point. Oh, I don't know, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, off topic. So... Uh, going nineteen, episode nineteen. That's how everybody knows. That's right, that's right. That's, <laughs> that's, that's true. So we brought in a new guest for episode nineteen. Yeah. <laughs> um, new host. Oh, is it, should I say my name? I don't. I'm Allie. <laughs> Hi, Allie. Yeah, I, I don't think we're even doing last names, so I wouldn't even worry about that. Maybe, maybe one day we'll put that out there, but not right now. <laughs> um. The one thing I did forget, like, I think all the, what is it, all the 
all the current day is italics and all the kids are normal writing. Is that right? Yeah. There was some way he uh, divided that. It's kind of annoying because maybe because I'm getting old, it's getting harder to read the italic parts. You know, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> I didn't think about it because he uses italics all the time anyway. <laughs> oh, like yeah. There's, there's, there's definitely like a, a division there. Where, yeah. yeah. Like chapter four, you know, okay, we start with Ben. I kind of skipped over the first part, um, first couple pages. Uh, and Ben's got some Inception stuff going on here because he's, well, let's see if I have this right. He's at on a plane dreaming about being in 1957 where he's flashing back to when Henry attacked him. Yep. Yeah. So there's uh, there's a lot going on there. And then I think within his flashback he also had a dream or something. Well, he falls asleep in the flashback twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a dream about uh, the clown. <laughs> well, we'll get to that because I'm starting to go. How many times does this guy have narcolepsy or what? He's like fall- Henry Bowers is chasing him. He's running for his life and he's falling asleep. Okay. Well, oh. that that time feels a little different because that's after like that had to have been at least an hour or so of like him fighting for his life and like he's completely exhausted. <laughs> I guess he being like overweight and probably not very athletic for him to spend an hour in like fight or flight mode I, I get that and I would be yeah. excited <laughs> yeah I think uh, what I realized reading this again is most of my memories and or most of my recent memories are from totally the movies and have nothing to do with the book <laughs> uh, yeah I'm finding that too I was like oh yeah I forgot this happened in the book <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Stephen King makes Ben more like it. Like he's really fat in the book, and not as much in the movies. Like his, you know, in the in the book when I guess I have to get there. But Henry's when Henry's carbon is his uh, name. It's it's like his stomach's like hanging down over his belt, and that doesn't. He's not that big in in the uh, in the movies. Yeah, yeah. Stephen King is so, also yeah, like maybe, really maybe maybe running for his life is. Uh, for this version of Ben is much more exhausting than the uh, than the one I've uh, used to. I always picture I mean, the kid from the from the Tim Curry movie. When, when I, I don't think ben. he even has to be that much bigger for it to be exhausting. Like anybody would be exhausted in that situation. Well, no, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't my point. Just, I, just the contrast. Like I'm always picturing yeah. the guy from from the '80s or the '90s movie, and uh, I think in the book he's supposed to be even bigger than that. Yeah, they call him the fattest kid <laughs> in school. I think. Well, Stephen like, King is not very nice to him and seems like large people in general. Like, there's yeah. a lot of derogatory marks in there about it. Like, yeah, he's yeah. fat, but I guess he's still okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's kind of judgy about fat people. I'm not sure what that <laughs> is. Whenever he talks about his character, they're like fat slobs and they're disgusting and they suck. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, geez, man. Not everybody walks 10 miles a day for 40 years. Come on. Some of us had to go to work. What happens when you do? You can get hit. Right. And then you write eight books about getting hit. Yeah. <laughs> Allie, I don't know if you know, but Stephen King got hit by a car on his walk. <laughs> oh, no, I did not know that. Jeez. <laughs> In uh, 1999. Uh, June 19th. <laughs> right. And that comes up in this section. Uh, and I guess that is just coincidence because he wrote this about 20 years before he got hit. There's no such thing <laughs> as a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, but what could it be? I think Eddie... Well, we have to get there. I think Eddie died on June 19th, or something happened to Eddie on June 19th. Eddie Corcoran, mm. not Eddie Casper. Oh, I didn't even catch that. Um, all right. Well, I think we're skipping ahead. So, uh, all right. So, Ben's on a plane dreaming about Henry, I guess. So, I, I, I don't cool. know. The first, like, like what is, what is Ben's part? Like, 60 pages? The first 20 pages to me are just, like, you know, coke-fueled filler. <laughs> it's, it's him talking about being in school and this and this and that and it's like okay let's just get okay he gets his report card school's over he's got his uh what does mom give him a new pair of jeans and uh, something so he's basically you know school's out he's out yep. for the 
summer. Uh, he's excited to go to the library because he's a nerd. Yeah, <laughs> no 12 year old ever. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I like the library at 12, I guess. But I was always, you know. Well, yeah. You didn't have as many, like, resources. There was not really internet and stuff back then. So it was like, you got to get free books and stuff to do. <laughs> yeah. That was, well, when I was a kid, they didn't have them. But, you know, once, uh, like, CDs and DVDs started hitting the library. Yeah, man, that's true. Man, that was a game changer. I can take these home and bring them back maybe one day if I feel like it. Hell yeah. <laughs> of course, Stephen King has another take on that. He has, have you read the library, please? Anybody? Uh, no, yeah. but I think we've talked about it because I know yeah. the plot. Yeah, it's uh, you better return your library books or else. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds a lot like of Stephen his, King. Uh, right? A lot of his kids are very well read. A, a lot of his characters. I mean, we talked about that, but uh, he has a lot of kids that spend a lot of time reading. And you know. well, let's. We all know that Stephen King know, writes what he knows. So <laughs> yeah, every time they talk about Ben going to the library, oh, and the and the uh, the the glass partition uh, that he took and stood up on its side for the French building or whatever it was. Oh, uh, the, the tunnel connecting the adult and uh, kids' libraries that, like, stood yeah. on with the building that everyone was, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Is that just the... the Ali, I don't know if you've ever seen the Bangor Library, but Amber, is, is that that's the thing we were staring at, right? That's that glass thing so, that Tabby had built? I, I had the same thought and I looked it up, but that wasn't built until like 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 2013. It was a lot later. So that's not the thing we were checking out. No, but maybe it was built with whatever he was thinking of in mind, because it definitely sounds like exactly what he's describing. But that's why I looked it up, and it's not the same. Like this was it was written way before. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole uh, basically uh, Tabitha King saved the Dairy Public Library going up there and she Not goes, the mm-hmm. banger of public library. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's actually funny in the book they're two different places. Uh, I guess you say in and I'm air quoting real life, it's uh <laughs> uh in the, it's the same place. Yeah. <laughs> so she gave like the library like they they're notorious uh if you ever make it to Bangor you have to do the tour, but they're notorious for giving away money in that town. And uh, one of the things they did was they have like I forget how we worded it but it's like you know there's 50,000 people in Bangor and they have like the best library in the you know yeah. state of Maine or something like that <laughs> hey I Wait. can believe that but yeah I mean I'm sure he has done a lot for that town and he probably should considering how much it's <laughs> influenced his books <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder if he's so famous now that they're just like oh, Stephen King, oh. like <laughs> you know. I mean, yes, he's done a lot for him. But they're like, you know, there's more to Maine than Stephen King. Like, eh, no, there's not. I mean, even when we were on the tour, like there were still lots of people coming on their own and visiting his house. Like, how many tourists can there be in Maine? I mean, I guess maybe there are a lot, but like, it. I don't know. It feels like there are probably still a lot of people that are like cool about it. Like, Maine isn't. They're very chill, you know what I mean? Like they're like, "Oh, welcome back. You here for Stephen King?" Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely part of uh, the the main life. Uh, God, I don't want to leave every time we go there. I'm like, can I just like get a job up here? And, <laughs> like I do IT, so I could work from home, right? You mean you actually rate. could? <laughs> um. All right, so Ben is. Uh, makes his way to the library and uh, I guess the the synopsis of that well well he has a, okay so he's at the library I, I think flashing back or is this is he not at the library yet about Henry uh, asking him to copy Henry he basically says no well I think and, that's just in school yeah, yeah that was in school before he left yeah that was a, actually that wasn't the last day. That must have been a couple. So, they were so you're right. You're right. He must have been remembering and what he did to make Henry want to hunt him down on the last day, because their report cards came out. That's what it was. 
<laughs> yeah, and he's pretty sure Henry was going to fail, be, and he's pretty sure it was, well, according to Henry, it was his fault. I don't know why right. I agree with that. But, um, ben has a way of making everything seem like his fault, though. Like, we're, I don't, we're not there yet, but even when he runs into Eddie and Bill later on, he's like, oh, you got, like, he's like, uh, I don't remember exactly what he says, but he feels bad. He's like, it's my fault that Henry came and destroyed your dam. Like, he, I'm just glad he didn't hurt you, too. He's like, it's not your fault. You didn't do anything. <laughs> you know, he didn't feel that bad because when they were punching Eddie in the face, he didn't exactly come out of hiding. He just kind of sat there and went to sleep. Well, okay. <laughs> Again, I think uh, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> yeah. Plus, he seems he might have to get that condition checked out. There might be something going on there. Um, and, you know, I was watching the movie while I was reading, but actually I had to stop because it got too confusing. Uh, but the one, the new movie, the, or the new round of movies, uh, the one thing that cracked me up was when, like, they show Eddie and and uh, Bill just kind of sitting in the barrens, building their, I guess, building their damn plan, and then just, like, Ben just like somersaults into the screen and like plops down in the water like like you know end over end. It was kind of like cracking me up. Like oh mm-hmm. wait a minute, an entrance. So I don't think it, I don't remember it being that. Dr- not matter of fact, I was reading the book and it was definitely not that dramatic. And the book I kind of forgot. And this is what I mean when it, like my memories are all uh, movie related. I forgot all the shit he went through to get rid of fucking Henry and them. Like they they were. Oh my uh, god, I know. Yeah. It was one thing after another, and I think he even thinks at one point, he's like, oh my God, all this day never end? Because then, then he finally shakes off Henry, and he has to go to uh, yeah. uh, watch Eddie, who's about to die, because of Henry, because of Ben, I guess, if you follow on that log. I, I wrote that down, too. It's like, when he says, will this day, won't this day ever end? I'm like, we're seeing the fast-paced nature of this book. Like, part two has just been... Ben getting chased and sliced by Bowers. Then he has to run away and he injures himself more while he's running away. Then he dreams about his first encounter with Pennywise while he's resting from that. And then immediately after he wakes up, he runs into Eddie and Phil and has to help them. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. He's on the plane dreaming about dreaming about dreaming. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. Uh, so yeah, it was getting like, I don't know if you've seen Inception, but it was getting, it was getting pretty deep there. <laughs> and by the way, Henry Bowers has a pink motorcycle jacket? I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was kind of strange. <laughs> oh, like, that definitely didn't make the movie. And I don't know, apparently somebody made fun of him. I think I highlighted it. But... It also seems strange because of the whole Adrian Mellon scene. Like the like you would think that Bowers wouldn't be the type to wanna want anyone to think he was gay. <laughs> well, that was 27 years before Adrian Mellon died. Yeah, but wouldn't that mean it was worse? You would think, but maybe it just wasn't prevalent enough to be seen as like mm, a, a, a negative or even a possibility. That's right, yeah. That's a good point. I think it would have been worse in the 80s. It would have had 30 years to build up the hatred. Right, I think that's what Ali's saying is like it hadn't really like being gay wasn't really a thing yet. <laughs> right, that still meant happy in the fifties, <laughs> yeah. or or at least publicly. Public, gay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you do, uh, Amber? Have you guys talked about the first part of this book at all, Ali? I don't know what you know. Um, um we oh, didn't, oh, but she did. Bit. Remember, she listened to our podcast. Oh right, okay. Then you know about the whole gay pride banger thing. Yeah, yeah, I had no idea that that was an actual thing that happened in Banger that he included in the book. I vaguely remember that. Uh, the first time we did the tour, his dad didn't really get into that. He didn't go into that too much, but uh, Jamie definitely, it was like a selling point for him. It was So I didn't realize that basically Stephen King kicked off the whole conversation by putting it in the book. So it was mm-hmm. pretty neat. Huh? And I mean, the details were like extremely similar. There is no question about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. It makes me wonder if like some of the other missing cases that he mentions in here, like how many of those were actual cases of missing children that just went unnoticed that he made up a story for. Oh God, I hope he made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I never even thought of that. Like he's just walking around and there's a bunch of people missing in Bangor. He's like, hmm, I wonder where they are. 
Yeah. Uh, it's a very real possibility, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, Although, it is. And now I'm wondering if Banger has a, a, a high missing person, missing children. Yeah. Right? I think in the book he said Derry was nine times the state average, some, some ridiculous number. And like, how is there not swarming with FBI if there's that many people? Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, listening to other podcasts about Stephen King and it specifically though they have said that uh, the three billy goats gruff was also an inspiration for it and there's a whole lot of mentions in Ben's section specifically too in the library that was um, I remember that being a kid not so much anymore I think that was one of those things that was popular at the time that he wrote this, the, that story. Mm. Uh, and that's the, the who's trip, trip, trip trapping across my bridge, I think, if I remember that right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I could kind of see. I didn't really notice that that was an inspiration, but now to say that, I can, you know, it's the thing under the bridge, it's the thing in the sewer, like it's under, yeah. so he just made under a little bit bigger than a bridge, I guess. Yeah. That's how, yeah, that's me too. Like, I didn't think about that reading it, but now that you say it, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of, I guess, um, references to it. (laughs) Illusion. Yeah, Yeah, in this part, yeah, he mentions it several times. I just, I just kind of started glossing over those parts. I'm like, okay, enough with the Billy Goats, but I, I I guess if that's an inspiration, maybe I should pay a little more more attention. (laughs) Uh, Right, that was, I remember the 80s. That was a story when I was a kid too, so. Um, so Ben's in school, I guess, uh, or, okay, so he leaves school, he starts, he sees Beverly, okay, he does the thing I think every kid in history has done, he, he <laughs> starts saying Beverly Hanscom in his, uh, to himself, and he gets, his face turns, like, beat red, he gets so embarrassed, uh, <laughs> Just by saying it, I think every ten-year-old, or at least every ten-year-old boy, has done that. I don't know about you guys. Oh yeah, I used oh, to yeah. write it in my notebooks. Yep. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, I had that. I don't even remember some girl, and like, it was when we were at my grandmother's house after my mom died, and she she wanted basically to see what I was writing, and I wouldn't let her, and it became a big thing because there was no way in hell she was going to see what I wrote in that notebook, no matter what. <laughs> matter of fact, I got her out of my room finally without showing it to her. I tore the page out, crumpled it, like slept with it in my hand, and took it like <laughs> to school the next day and burned it. It was, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, puberty is a, does all weird things to people. But, <laughs> but it's like cocaine's a hell of a drug. Puberty's a weird drug. Yeah, that didn't quite work. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and then he, you know, he does the infamous... I'm kind of skipping around. because I'm looking at Ben still in school, but I'm thinking about Ben and Beverly because then he goes to the library and does the infamous poem. Right which I forgot was supposed to be a haiku and uh, maybe I don't remember I thought haikus rhyme is no. that wrong with that yeah they don't have to mm-hmm. rhyme so they're just random words <laughs> it, it just, just has to really be 757 seven. I wonder how long it took him to come up with that I wonder if he was sitting on the bench looking at the standpipe while he came up with that I, I don't know I mean this is a what fourteen or thousand page book. Like I don't think it took him that long to come up with a haiku. <laughs> well, uh, I guess that's true. <laughs> I mean, he did. Well, I mean, according to Stu, Jamie didn't talk to him a lot. He did get stuck. I mean, regularly enough that he sat on that bench until he worked his way through it. So I, I mean, even in a fourteen hundred page book, there's plenty of uh, spots to get stuck. Yeah, that's true. I can just imagine, like, okay, what, where do I, because he, you know, he's the kind of writer, he doesn't have a plan or an outline, he just writes, so I can imagine, like, he finishes the chapter, he's like, okay, now what? So he, he probably goes, you know, goes for an infamous walk, and then figures out the now what while he's walking. Mm. I can't um, imagine having that much in my head all the time. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, and I think Bill Denbro throughout this book is Stephen King, he talks about when he's Bill, maybe it's coming up. 
he, how the, 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 there's, the words are like crowding his brain and he's writing at a furious pace trying to get them all out before they they like explode in his head or something like that <laughs> I was like yep that's, that's you know when you have an 1100 page book yeah that's probably the feeling he had he probably I don't even know does it say the back how long it took him to write this I can imagine it was probably something stupid like six months yeah right no, no time at all <laughs> right yeah which is basically what that is because he writes and then rewrites everything, which to me sounds kind of horrible, but kind of necessary, I guess, too. You know, I mean, it, like, it works for him, I guess, because... <laughs> yeah, it's like, I well. finally finished writing it. It was like, all right, now go write it again. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so oh, I lost my place. Now I'm on 552. It's funny, uh, real quick... At the beginning of when he gets to the library, there's like a whole paragraph or whatever about just library stuff. And I was like, oh my God, cue library rant. Just talking about the library. <laughs> yeah, he donates regularly to, uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but the, the fund to keep libraries across the country open. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, a, I mean, obviously, I mean, I think... You know, yeah, he's a little bit of everybody in this book, maybe except Beverly. But, well, maybe part of Beverly, too. But, Probably um, not. <laughs> we know how he does with female characters. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you mean? How Susanna. Does he do? Oh, yeah. They suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like Beverly. I don't like Susanna, but I like Beverly. Well, I just meant that uh, he doesn't relate to them. Uh, You know, you would think he would a little better because his mom raised him. So he definitely has, it was his mom and like her two sisters that used to come over regularly or something. So like he definitely has the uh, female perspective, I guess you'd say. More so than like the father figure. But, um, all right. Then we, are you guys there? I'm getting weird noises. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm here. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Some kind of feedback. Um, then um, part six. Yeah, Ben loved the library. Like that's that. I think Ben's trips to the library were close to it because he was apparently bullied all the time. Uh, so he probably avoided people. I would assume uh, and spent a lot of time at the library. I don't know that for a fact, but it all makes sense in my head. Um, I mean, I would believe that too. <laughs> like you yeah. said, I think Stephen King is a little bit of everyone in this book. <laughs> yeah, he's been as a kid and Bill is an adult. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> I'm hoping there's no Stan in him at all. Just saying. <laughs> uh, Stan, Stan is Susanna. He's not like, fuck you, Stan. I hate you. <laughs> yeah, well, he do that with Susanna. Sorry, don't want to get off. Well, no, he did the opposite. Yeah, he did the opposite. Actually, I hate her for the complete opposite reasons. <laughs> okay, let's get away from the tower. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then uh, we start talking about the dead people. I have to write some of that down from my dairy history. But... Me too. I also think it's say... interesting. Like, why is Ben the one that's talking about this as a child too? It's a weird setup. <laughs> Yeah, with Henry looming outside, it's like, oh God, just, just, just get out of the library. Let's get this over with. Like, mm-hmm. I don't need thirty pages on, on, you know, the Dewey Decimal System or whatever he's doing in there. Exactly. Uh, so. Oh yeah, and then he said we got the poem. In 1958, 27 kids disappeared. That didn't like solves the problem. So Cheryl and Monica was 16. She was found in the Turalt stream. Matthew Clements was three. This is when the dead people started showing up. I think this is Ben's flashback. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Veronica Grogan. I don't have an age. All I could get out of that was fourth grade. So I think that's what? Mm, Ten? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, and then something else, but he says something about later on in this chapter about nine people that died, and I couldn't find nine people. I only had like four. Well, well five. If you court, if you count Dorsey and Eddie, then then it's five. But I don't. Well, Eddie doesn't, or Dorsey doesn't count. 
in my mind, at least for the. Well, I mean, no. he died. He, he died. Was already but, dead. Yeah, well, well, he died, but he didn't die from Pennywise. Right. He just died from the human monsters. We'll get to that part. <laughs> Well, it was kind of interesting with Dorsey because in terms of the timeline of like the span of years between when Penny Re- Pennywise or the spider or whoever comes up and does stuff, it seems like there's always an act of human violence before mm-hmm. all of his stuff starts. So like he's just feeding the 50s, off the uh... Yeah, like in the 50s it was the dad killing Dorsey and then Eddie dying from Pennywise or the creature from the Black Lagoon, whatever. Right. Um, and then in the when they come back as adults, it's the Adri- um, Adrian? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Adrian Mellon. So it's mm-hmm. like two horrific acts of human violence that leads to these supernatural killings. That's interesting. I wonder if yeah, that's it's also... It's almost like he's enhancing what's already there. He's not causing it. He's just... Right. Implementing. Yeah. Like, they're That's feeding off the energy of the spider, and he's feeding off the energy of them or something. I don't know, but... I think he actually spends a lot of time throughout this book talking about how Derry's bad without Pennywise. Or or maybe it's just that Pennywise has been there forever, and it's always been bad. I'm not sure if there's a, a distinction between the two. But, you know, he, he goes back to... I have some stuff written down to 1700. Like, ever since Derry was incorporated, it's been bad. Yep. So, <laughs> Well, the first mm-hmm. villagers all went missing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Croato and then, wait, oh, that was. Yeah, didn't he do some kind of Roanoke thing with that? Yeah. Wait, Derry history, where is it? Uh, Every, 1741, everyone in Derry disappears. There were 340 at the time, and they disappeared without a trace. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, I missed Betty Ripsom. Well, she was in the last chapter. She was found frozen on Jackson Street. Uh, and well, another thing that I noticed, I guess we got need, need to move it along. Uh, a lot of stuff happens at Witcham and Jackson. It's not like it was only one thing. Yeah, I noticed that too. I was like, wow, we're seeing that name a lot, or those streets a lot. Yeah, and Kossif. The only reason I remember that is because the locals say Kossif. Yeah. <laughs> That street keeps coming up. Um, so he does some pretty good, gruesome. Uh... Yeah. Oh, well, by the way, Cheryl LaMonica was 16. Three years before she had given birth to a daughter. That sounds awful. Or not awful, but like, what the hell's going on there? I mean, it does sound awful. <laughs> Well, I guess it depends on the circumstances, but yeah, a thirteen-year-old being having a kid, I guess, is awful no matter what. Like, but <laughs> Jesus Christ, is that normal in nineteen eighty-six? I you mean, you were alive. <laughs> I don't know. Look, <laughs> but see, you you were born when I was twenty-one. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I highlight that. I was like, wait a minute. She died when she was sixteen, and then the next paragraph says three years before she had a baby. Like. Wait, what? We're just gonna go off over that? Catch that, honestly. She and her daughter lived at home with Cheryl's parents. She was a little wild sometimes, but she was a good girl at heart. A lot of these. One of the nice boys had been a 40 year old Air Force colonel with a wife and three children in New Mexico. Another was currently serving time in Shawshank for armed robbery. So she got raped by a bunch of old guys. Right? That's what it sounds like, (laughs) huh? Jesus, man. There's a lot of uh, rapey stuff in this book, maybe, that I forgot about. Uh, there's one big one that I didn't forget about. I think the it, part of the issue is that they just don't include as much of it in the movies, so you forget how much is in the book. Because it's. I think that's just a part of Dairy. Like, everything in Dairy is bad. Yeah. You, uh... Look, she went, put her washing it in the dryer. When she next looked out the window to check on Maddie, he was gone. There had only been his overturned bike on the grass between the sidewalk and the street. One of the back wheels was still spinning lazily. As she looked, it came to a stop. I can completely picture that entire scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, as soon as I read it, it just pops like a, like a picture in my head. Uh, this, that made me his scene, 
that's, a, that's why I love his writing because it's like that's how I felt about the last scene too when we get there with uh, Mike being chased by the thing he hears behind him like I can see him hearing the splash and turning around and then hearing it again and right past him I'm like how does he do that it's so vivid. I read most of the bird this morning and I was um, terrified for Mike the entire time yeah like, what oh yeah <laughs> Like yeah, we'll, we'll get to that, but oh my, oh my god! Uh, <laughs> when when the bird starts like forcing its way in, and he's like, "Oh my god, I forgot it was made of feathers!" Like, oh yeah, he handles it like a champ too. Like he <laughs> he figures it out. <laughs> yeah, and there's and then the bird blocks all the light, so he's gonna like get eaten in the dark in a <laughs> in a uh, tunnel like, oh. with who knows what behind him too. Yeah, he didn't even go all the way in. I'm surprised he got out of there because I would have figured there would have been something behind him. Oh, uh, you know, Mike's the keeper of the uh, seven keys, so he can't do that. But I don't understand. I mean, I, maybe we're getting ahead of it, but I really don't get how things like that happen. Like, is it how hard you fight back that you survive, or the fight, the fact that you fight back at all that you show you're not afraid? Like, it's confusing to me. <laughs> I, I think these flashbacks, and that's what this part is, and I guess it's just going to continue the next chapter, is like kind of like each person's introduction to Pennywise when they were a kid. It was like their first... Uh, no, I get that. But like, Eddie, that was his first introduction too, and he didn't have a chance. Is it because he like kind of gave up? Because <laughs> he's not yeah. a main character. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's... That's what I was going to say. Like, I think this is their first encounter, and these are the ones that got away. Most people right, don't, okay, don't okay. get away. So I guess the, 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 the short answer is, yeah, they fought back and they managed to... I don't know, though. You would think something this ancient and galactically traveled would <laughs> be able to handle a 10-year-old. You know, just saying. Right. Well, I, I do think there's something to be said about the fighting back and the not being completely paralyzed by fear, because that seems to be a theme later on. Well, I'm pretty sure fear is what it feeds. Yeah, part at least partly. Yeah. Because I was thinking about that, like it kills the kids, but it just kind of leaves them there. It doesn't like like Georgie was just left bleeding in the street. Yeah. Well, Although Eddie was never out fighting. of them. Yeah, but it doesn't like you know eat them. It just yeah. it just mauls them and kills them, kind of thing. Like a like a you know wild animal kind of thing. Yeah. So there's there's something else that's sustaining it other than the the physical. And I think it's I think it's fear. And I think if I remember, we're getting ahead of way ahead of ourselves. But I think love is what conquers fear or something at the end. <laughs> something like that. Sounds so, like yeah, Harry Potter now. Fear, right. Okay. <laughs> All eight movies now on HBO Max. Yeah, we just we were just talking about that. Bad and I watched uh, Goblet of Fire yesterday. <laughs> what? Isn't that like the fourth one? You can't skip to that one. I told him I didn't want to watch any of the first three because they're children's movies, and he didn't want to watch any of the last three. So. <laughs> oh, I like the third one. <laughs> well, okay, the third one is my favorite, but I just wasn't in the mood for like a, that kind of movie. <laughs> That's right. What's the third one? Uh, the... Preserve Us. Yeah. With Sirius. That's and Snake, Bucky. right? Uh, the prisoner is... Uh... And Lupin, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I like Harry Potter. I missed it by about five years. I was just a little too old. <laughs> so, so I read, like, the... I think the first one, the... Goblet of Fire? Which one's that? Four. The fourth one and the last one, and then the hell That's what I read. So. <laughs> I got, you I got, missed I got, a I, lot in between... Well, yeah. you know, like I said, I was it, they were cool, they were entertaining, but they were like I, I was just a little bit outside the the target, so it, I didn't want to read eight books of it. So, you know, oh, uh, but anyway, and then she lost her mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really understand what's up going on there. Her and Stephen King are like not friends anymore. They were like best buddies. And now he's like, yeah, I can't do you anymore. Sorry. <laughs> um, I like Frankie or Freddie Ross uh, and the fabulous Gumstick. I just oh, love that the, grossed me out so bad. <laughs> I love the way he writes it, the imagery. Like, I feel like I knew people, and the way it was, the fabulous Gumstick is capitalized. Like, I could just 
picture some kid like that, all proud of his little gross inventions, like sticking it to everything that he can uh, find. <laughs> yeah. And then, well, and just like sticking it on everything he can find, and then chewing it again at the end of the night. I'm just like, oh, yeah, yeah. that was pretty gross. <laughs> that but, that was know, just nasty. Hey, and I uh, can see, like the, of course, COVID was not known then, but diseases were still around. And it's like, come on, guy, like, <laughs> uh, boys are not known as the cleanest people. Mm. So, I that, I would have done that totally if it was mine. Well, I don't know. Oh, kind of gross. I would have. I mean, I used to save my gum and go back to it the next day. I can't say I stuck it to a bunch of shit and then ate it. I might not do that. But yeah, I, I like the imagery of it. Like just this little kid walking around with his, the fabulous gum stick, like a like a circus event or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then so he finds what he thought was a wig that he was going to give to his mom that ended up being, I think, Veronica Grogan. Is that it? Uh, yes. So anyway, I, I like the fact, I love, like he acts like he didn't even know the kid's name. I don't really know what that was about, but it works. Like Frankie or Freddie. He says every time, Frankie or Freddie, Freddie or Frankie. Like, like you wrote this book. You don't know the guy's, the kid's name. <laughs> he as Ben would not. Because if it's yeah. a third party retelling, kind of. Yeah, it's like he's not important enough to give him an actual name, but just, just know that he found the body. Yeah. Um, let's see, where am I at? Ben's mom. I'm moving really slow. Uh, Thank you. Oh. Yeah, Ben's mom sits him down and says, you know about the missing kid? Uh, I guess so that's thrilled. why Ben was talking about them is because he's like, I guess that's how Stephen King put that in there is it's his mom warning him. Like, you know, all these missing kids, don't forget about them. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to look if I ever, if we ever do our, our dairy history project, we'll have to mm-hmm. see if there's an actual banger connection there. Like, if that's a conversation his mom actually had with him when he was a kid. <laughs> or maybe she did just for, you know, general purpose, not because it was people disappearing. Right. He was so thrilled with the Timex that he would have agreed with his mother that night. She had suggested John Wayne should play Adolf Hitler in a musical comedy about World War II. <laughs> <laughs> That's one hell of a lot, too. Uh, but he doesn't trust his mom. I highlighted that. She didn't know that he didn't have any friends, and that lack of knowledge made him distrust her. Yeah, it is kind of strange. I don't think my parents knew anything about my friends unless I wanted them to. Uh, and I didn't often well I guess my dad when I say that not my parents I mean uh, like Grammy required us to like she was like okay I need to talk to their mom first or I need to meet their parents first like before yeah. they're allowed to go anywhere we had all that but there were ways around <laughs> you know it was, we had like a friend that sounded older that was always the friend that played the parent <laughs> um there's wait um, Ben's dreaming I think well he, he has a like, dream about the clown yeah he held a clutch of balloons and that's the other thing at some point in popular culture all the balloons became red but in the story a lot of them are different colors yeah yeah it held a clutch of balloons red yellow blue green and his white gloved hand beckoned with the other which I found it interesting that in the dream he saw it as a clown like he immediately recognized it as a clown when he had seen a mummy granted a mummy soup but yeah, sure. uh, it was a mummy when he acted where was where did Ben see him ne- Nebo Street Wait, where did Ben see him oh, where was the mummy at yeah. um, uh, it was the he was after he was there after school helping yeah he was walking home it was oh, oh it, was in the, it was in the bottom of the library right he had a, they were put or, they were filing stuff or something. well Actually, he was think... he was filing stuff and then he left and walked home and yeah. he stopped over the canal and saw it on the frozen uh river and by the way he talks about that canal with with churning white foam I had uh, gotta tell you I don't remember it being that 
uh, uh, violent, not violent, but that, uh, yeah, like busy. moving, yeah, yeah, it was but very the canal, calm. the one that we saw in real life also was a lot smaller, like, like you said, you're not gonna die if you fall from that. <laughs> How far down is it in the book? 20 feet? It seems really far, I don't know, the other one is like five feet. I mean, yeah, it doesn't seem that far until you jump off the bridge. Well, yeah, I know, but it's not like it's not like a bridge. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, I guess technically because it's over water, but it seems like the same level. <laughs> yeah, canal. I guess you think more of as like a shallow little yeah, I dip do. under a road or something, and then the bridge is like the fifty feet off the ground going over a gigantic well, river. Whatever. The canal in Bangor goes, it cuts like right through downtown. I, it says two miles in the book. I don't know how accurate that is. So, you, you like, we saw it. It, it. And it literally, like, they built a town around the canal. It's kind of weird the way it goes yeah. right through the middle of it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so, I guess canal is the right word, but that's not what I'm picturing every time he says canal in the book because it's much larger. Okay. Yeah, I just picture the canal that was on the tour. I'm like, hey, there's a canal. That's, and that's the bridge where Adrian Mellon died. And that's, you know. Yeah. So I just picture that that whole thing. And then then I look and I go, there's no way you're putting thousands of balloons under it. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, okay, I think Ben took a huge risk by writing Beverly's name and address on his haiku postcard. I thought he was mailing it to her. Well, that would have been another thing. I I would have scribbled that name on there as I was dropping it in. I wouldn't know oh. no way anybody was gonna find that. <laughs> Mm-mm. I did that once in uh, fourth grade, third grade, I think. I think my fourth grade. Was, uh, we you know we used to do like um, Valentine cards every uh, or every holiday. We would do cards for the class. You know, I had I think I had a crush on one girl, and I wrote. Instead of just writing like my name, I wrote "I love you" on it. And like, <laughs> like, like twenty of the girls were like, "Oh my god!" Tittering in the corner, and then the guys were like, "Dude, what'd you do that for?" Like, so it was like a <laughs> not one of the traumatized. <laughs> yeah, it was traumatized, but it, it was. I didn't realize. I thought it was going to be a personal thing, and I didn't realize the whole <laughs> grade was going to get involved. <laughs> like, well, I'm not doing that again. Then somebody, I think that was the same year somebody dared me to kiss this girl on the bus, and I did. And then they all made so much fun of me for kissing her that uh, I swear I'd never do that again. I'm never kissing a girl in my life. That was awful. Uh, <laughs> grade school is very traumatizing. <clears throat> um, the so Ben dreams about, or daydreams about uh, Beverly Hanscom. Uh, at one point, he talked about Bill's red hair. I don't... Did, did, did you guys catch that? I don't remember Bill having red hair. I don't know. I know. Uh, the conductor was right. caged in a concrete canal two miles long as it passed through downtown. It became... Uh, it dived under Main Street at the intersection of Main and Canal, becoming an underground river for half a mile before servicing again at Bassey Park. You know... The tour, they don't mention anything about Bassey Park. I feel like that's probably a real place there somewhere. Isn't that the flip or the baseball p- field? The Bassey Park? Oh, that was what I assumed. I don't know why. That just seems like a Bassey Park. <laughs> Memorial Park is where the standpipe is. That part I know. At least no, in the book. Where the baseball field is. No, not at the Sean T. Mansfield Memorial Stadium or whatever it's called. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. is the baseball field? Yeah. Is where the standpipe is? No, 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 no. It's two different parks. I, I don't know the park that the baseball field is. I know the stadium is the Sean T. Manfield Stadium. Okay. Because um, Sean T. Manfield was the kid that had um, MS or something. Mm-hmm. And so they, it was like his friend's coach's son or something. Uh, and I, th- I think he died, didn't he? Like he was like 15 or something. And they love baseball, so they made so he was like, Here's a million dollars, name the whole stadium after. <laughs> um, in nineteen sixty nine, the citizens would be shocked and sickened to discover that hippies one of them had actually sued an American flag on the seat of his pants 
and that pinko faggot was busted before you could say Gene McCarthy. We were smoking dope and trading pills up there in Bassey Park. By 69, it became an open air farm. Uh, reminds me of Shakedown Street. <laughs> um, that's, I mean, I, I, okay, so I, I keep getting stuck on Ben because this part's so long. Yeah, I'm like, we gotta move on. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I'm trying to get Ben to Henry. So Ben leaves the library. He's basically dreaming of uh, Beverly and doesn't see Henry. Oh, I forget the exact moment. He's doing something, having a daydream, and then Henry grabs him. And he's what he was thinking of. Probably Beverly. So he was uh, definitely far away from reality when Henry put his hand on so well he yeah. was in the he was thinking about Bev and then all of a sudden for a second he was thinking about the clown and like yeah. suppose when he turned to find a phone and call the police a clown was standing there a funny clown wearing a baggy suit with big orange puffs for buttons suppose a hand fell on Ben's shoulder and he screamed <laughs> and that was Henry where was the clown oh like across the street at the payphone or something I was just thinking of it. Ben's pleasant fantasy of Beverly was suddenly broken by one far more grim. What if a dead hand flopped out of the culvert right now, right this second, while he was looking? And suppose that when he turned to find a phone and called the police, a clown was standing there. A funny clown wearing a baggy suit with big orange puffs for buttons. Suppose a hand fell on Ben's shoulder and he screamed. So we just imagine the clown for no reason. I mean... Uh, you know, <laughs> man, I, I was thinking about that especially in this part all the kids Mike does it Bill does it Ben does it I think Eddie did it they're all like what if a dead thing was in there and it was coming to get me oh like, uh, I did that all the time as a kid though any dark space I did that but I think it was Stephen King's fault <laughs> <That's true. laughs> maybe it was yeah I don't know that I, I don't know do normal kids have all that dark um, imagery in their minds I guess maybe they do I know I, do. I still do I'm like what if like every time I see a plane over my head, I'm like what if it crashed right now? Yeah. What like, if I what just what drove I this car right over this bridge right now? <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, I would never do it, but it, it, my mind definitely goes to those dark places. I, I just, I don't mm-hmm. know that normal. Uh, what are these guys like? Eleven-year-olds think about things like that, but everyone in this part is like, "What if?" <laughs> I guess that's a product of what they're around too, maybe because I mean, like. I feel like every kid is like scared of the dark, scared of the thing in the basement. But I mean, if they're seeing all these things and hearing all these things about missing kids and how they're, you know, ripped apart and torn to pieces and well, that's true. Gutters and stuff. It is probably uh, the details probably are on the news, but I'm sure they overhear conversations. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Henry and Belt. Or- they hold him. Henry Carr's his name. He kicks it. Actually, in the movie, it was just like it happened in the book. He he plants his foot in Henry's midsection and pushes off him and flips over the guardrail and down the hill. Uh, One thing I found kind of interesting was that I didn't realize that um, Victor and uh, what's the other one? The other two that belts. they were belts. yeah belts <laughs> that they were not immediately uh, down for what Henry was doing. Like, once they realized he was about to actually cut him, he was like, what the? He's like, don't actually cut him. What are you doing? Yeah. I mean, they're down for some bullying and, you know, low-level <laughs> violence. But, that, you know, that's a whole other, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that's a charge right there. That's just not your normal vandalism. Um, yeah, for being thugs, not criminals. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'll take your lunch money, but God damn. You got to draw the line somewhere. Right, not your uh, life. <laughs> I don't know what a shoot to shoot is. He sent, he landed sitting up and went sliding down the slope backward like a kid on a big green shoot to shoot. I, put, I don't know. I guess that's a sliding. I have no thing. idea. No idea. Like a big slide. I, I'm picturing shoots and ladders. So. That's what I was thinking. And loop de loop, like when you tie your shoe. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he slams into the tree to get away. From, like, I don't know that we're going to go into everything that Ben went through, but he. It was a lot harder for him to get rid of Henry than it was in the uh, movie. <laughs> I, sure. I definitely agree. Like when, you, like what you said before, I did not remember that it's like, okay, he gets away from them. Oh crap, they're still chasing him. Okay, he gets away from them again. Oh my god, they're still chasing him. Now he gets away from them again. They're still chasing him. Like what the heck? He's hiding <laughs> in a 
shallow of a tree under the riverbank while they're walking around trying to find him. Oh my god, what if they'd have found him? Because I'm pretty sure Henry was so mad at that point. I don't know. He might have killed him there. Oh, I believe he definitely would have. Because he didn't think that Ben or that Ben was gonna run away and escape. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's because I guess because he's fat, the fattest kid in school. Did they say they have a certain anonymous notoriety or something being the fattest kid in school? Uh. So he probably. I think. Oh, he said something else too. Like. Does he say? I, uh, I highlighted it, but that's not going to help me find it. Uh, like most large people, he was surprisingly adept on his feet, or something like that. And I was like, oh. "Wait, are, are, he, he was saying he's surprisingly fleet-footed for a fat person." But the way he said it was like, "Like most fat people, he was surprisingly fleet of foot." Like, wait, wait, wait. Wait, it's it's most fat people are fleet of foot. How's that surprising? I don't get that. <laughs> that's surprising to me. I wouldn't. Like, no, I is feel that, like I, that sentence is a contradiction. Okay, well that's not my point. I might not have it worded <laughs> perfectly, but he's saying most bigger people are surprisingly uh, nimble, and I, I'm not sure I agree with that. But that's what I'm saying. How can <laughs> like I mean, I, yeah, I guess I'm saying I also disagree. That's why <laughs> I don't know. Like, wait, yeah. I would, like it, it's just. He, Whatever. He needs to go like spend some time with fat people. I think he has like no clue with that. <laughs> <laughs> and he's very judgy when he when he does bring it up. Except for that one random like like most large people, he was surprisingly fleet of foot. Like what? That's also like, such he... a backhanded compliment if that's true. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, it just kind of proves that you have no idea what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> yeah, he came out of his hiding place two hours later. And that's the other thing. What time did he get out of school? Because he, like, he he hangs out at the library for an hour, and then he meets them, and then he runs from them, and then he sleeps for two hours, and then he gets up, and then he goes to the other place and finds out they're still looking for him, and then he sleeps for another hour, and then he meets Eddie and Bill, and it's still not time to be home yet. I'm like, did he, like... <laughs> Did he just go? Did he leave school at eight in the morning? Because he had what it had to. I think it said the final bell rang at noon, and it, I don't know. I it did say he slept for two hours, but maybe it only felt like that to him because it was in Bill's or yeah, in Bill's section. It was saying like forty-five minutes later, Ben stumbled into the clearing. I'm like oh, that's, that's vastly true. different between two hours and 45 minutes but okay sure it says right here he came out of his hiding place about two hours later dirty than ever but a little refreshed yeah but maybe that's just from his perspective uh yeah I'm just talking and then they were still behind him I don't know what they were doing for two hours I think I a kid even, I think Henry would have gave up long before that uh, and then they punch Eddie. I, I don't. They never really talk about what Eddie did to piss Henry off. I guess he didn't really have to do anything except open his mouth because Henry was already mad about Ben. Well, no, he does. Uh, yeah, he does say that because that's another thing that Ben feels bad about. And Bill meant. I think he just thinks it. He's like, he, it, it doesn't take anything. Like Eddie or Henry would have done it anyway. Don't feel bad. <laughs> I just can't remember exactly what he says because I remember writing that down. Yeah. Ben has a queer aversion to meeting Miss Douglas's husband. Does mean he has a crush on his teacher? Oh, he talks about how he loves his teacher. Like, not in that way, but he loved her and he loved this teacher. And like, okay, that's a strong emotion to be conveying on a teacher, personally. <laughs> I don't know that I loved any of my teachers other than there was, you know, a puberty crush or two in there for, I think, my eighth grade teacher. But other than that, like, I didn't... I didn't love my teachers. It's kind of weird. Yeah, but if they're the only ones he has a connection with because he has no friends. Mm -hmm. Well, and he probably point. doesn't relate as much to his peers as he does to the adults. Yeah. Yeah, I like when he says the adults liked him because he was polite and kind and this and that. All the reasons, all the same reasons the kids didn't like him. Yeah. <laughs> Ben, the cl oh, uh, okay, so 
Ben sees the clown on the ice out in the Barrens, right? The mummy. That yeah, well yeah, well it's the clown the mummy. <laughs> it, it's a clown until he sees his face. Right. Yeah. Because it was hiding its face, and then something the wind blew or something along the page. But the balloons were floating towards him against the wind. Yeah. It's like, remember Amber, we were saying in the first part they they never actually say we all float down here or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they, I think they said it in this part. So I, I wrote that down. I was like, it makes more sense now why the floating, like why you might not want to float, because he's talking about how the balloons are floating in the wrong direction. Like they should not be going that way against the wind. So it's like that yeah. definitely conveys something sinister. <laughs> floating is definitely worse than it was in the first part. Yeah. Uh, they float, Ben. They all float. Try one and see. Ben uh, says, no. who... Oh, well, actually, so I, I got ahead of myself. At first, it makes the floating seem cool because Ben says, who in the, all the world owned a balloon which would float into the wind? Like, he's in awe of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought he was terrified of it. But then as he gets closer... <laughs> Yeah, because he was saying in that same section, uh, he said, yes, he wanted a balloon and he wanted to see the clown's face, which was bent down towards the ice as if to keep it out of that killer wind. Yeah, that paragraph starts with in spite of his fear, so he's, he's definitely feeling both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's kind uh, of like a lure. I mean, we already knew it's that. It's hypnotic. But yeah, yeah. And That's it's the, it. the bell. The... Um, Oh, the five o'clock whistle atop the Dairy Town Hall hadn't. If the five o'clock whistle hadn't blown, that's true. He probably would have gone down there. Yeah, he would have. Or yeah. the, see, these, these are all like, him. they're all like close calls. Like these are all things that they shouldn't have survived, but for some for one reason or another, they did. Because I feel like these all could have been part of the missing or dead. Yeah. I mean, Ben and Mike for sure. Bill is a little more questionable. Bill was just kind of remembering Georgie, I think, mostly. Then. Yeah, because he had the photo album, and that was really his only experience to this point with Pennywise. Yeah. Himself, yeah. The photo album, oh, yeah, it just, he threw it across the room. What did he see in the picture? I don't know if he gets it. It it's started, uh... like, bleeding. Yeah. Because, yeah, and maybe I've watched this movie too many times and I need to stop doing that, but I'm picturing the four, the seven of them, they were looking at photo album and Pennywise. Oh, in the garage, it. yeah. 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 That was such a good scene in the movie. Mm-hmm. I know, I'm picturing it now, too. <laughs> well, I was just watching the one where Ben has the photo album and he... It, it does the same thing. Like, you keep flipping the page and it gets closer and closer and you can see, like, a dead kid's face in the tree. It's like, well, oh, I don't remember yeah. that. I didn't even remember that from the movie and I just watched that, what, three years ago. We need to have a movie party after we get through this book. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, we could do a watch party. Because, uh, I mean, there's technically, what, three movies we gotta watch? None, none of them are short. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's very descriptive about the mummy, too. I mean, uh, deeply lined, the skin, a partial map of wrinkles, tattered cheeks, arid flesh, forehead was split, dead lips grinned back from a maw in which teeth leaned like tombstones. I like that image. Its gums were pitted and black. He could see no eyes, but something glittered far back in the charcoal pits of those puckered sockets. Something like the cold jewels in the eyes of Egyptian scarab. He's good at describing bad stuff. Especially the eyes. Like, that's around me the bird. Yeah, I've never too. heard that. You always hear, like, you know, two two points of light in a black face or, you know, so, something like that. Yeah. I've never heard it. Uh, something glittered far back in the charcoal pit. Makes you wonder how deep those eyes go. Uh, and just scarab beetles, I think, are the ones that eat poop. Um... I, the poop yep. or flesh? Mm, that's a good question. I don't know. What was that? I think they eat flesh. 
because I think they used to put them in with the bodies. Um, well, they so definitely they do would, like, help with the um, pre- preservation process, maybe. Yeah, they definitely that put them in, the, in my mind, in but the, I don't know. They put them in the tombs. I don't know if they put them in the actual sarcophagi, sarcophaguses. Uh, and I know they're the ones they they like roll the dung along the road if they actually eat flesh. I'm not sure, but they definitely put them in the tombs. So I don't. I, I guess the answer is why, or the question is why do they put them in the tombs? They're, they're like the beetles are real important in Egyptian culture. They're like on all the hieroglyphics. Yeah. You know, can you say that word? Hieroglyphics and that stuff. <laughs> I never, you know, investigated enough to care. Or I care enough to investigate, I guess. Um, Alright, so now Bill's on a different, faster, and narrower plane. Uh, I never thought about that. I had an MRI last week, and I found out that I'm not claustrophobic, but I could see how someone could be. Was your... <laughs> <laughs> Which did you have to go all the way in? Yeah, well, yes. Oh, because it was my for leg... your shoulder, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So like my whole Yeah, at least my whole upper half was in. And then it was like the sides are squeezing and the top is, you know, two inches from my eyes. I'm like, uh okay. And you can't move an inch either. Yeah. yeah. She was like she's but she actually they put headphones in my ear. She's like, What do you listen to? I'm like, Oh what do you got? She's like, I got Spotify. I'm like, oh, okay. So I think I just said classic rock because I didn't know what to say. And then, you know, it was 10 minutes of commercial. I was like, oh, you have free Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got one song out of the 20 minutes that I was in there. But yeah, man, those things are... are I'm glad I'm not claustrophobic. I'm not sure I could handle that. But I could see I how that could bother me. Especially when... Because it's so cramped already and then the sides are like squeezing you. You're like, no, there's nowhere to squeeze to. Like, stop that. <laughs> stop that. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't like it Um, a lot of Bill stuff is like I said I think autobiography like the uh, the all the interviewers that ever asked me that question yeah yeah we all know we all know what that question is and then he says something almost philosophical about it well you know where do you get your ideas all all writers have a pipeline which goes down into the subconscious but the man or woman who writes horror stories has a pipeline that goes further into the sub subconscious he's like elegant answer but he didn't really believe um so bill is uh oh bill's about ah, silver high silver um you know, not even a week later, he found himself unable to break soon enough and had shot through the intersection of Witcham and Jackson at 35 miles an hour. <laughs> but old Witcham, and that's, you know, that's the intersection where Georgie died, right? Witcham and Jackson. Mm-hmm. Not even a mention of that, huh? And every time I think Ben remembered Nebolt Street and Bill has remembered it, both of them have called it that damned house on Nebolt Street so far. Well, yeah. Wasn't that him, Bill, Bill, Ben, and Richie that were there? No, never mind. No, I don't think Ben was there. Yeah, the, you're right. With the mummy? It was Eddie, right? Whatever, yeah. never mind. Well, um, the werewolf? I don't know. So much. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was the werewolf, not the mummy. So, yeah. I don't but On the other hand, I don't I don't remember know the werewolf. I don't remember who was there. <laughs> I know Richie was there, and I think Eddie was there. Yeah. And... yeah. Well, Bill so, had to have been there because he had the bike, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we got a couple pages on Bill and Silver, and I, I don't know. I kind of don't care. So th- basically, <laughs> the bike was an old rust bucket that he saved, and it's way too big for him, but he made it work. Yeah. Uh, and that becomes important later, I guess, with Audra, but I don't I, don't... I mean, if becomes important we just talked about it. it also becomes important in the other flashback coach yeah getting For, away from you know Neville Street Neville Street again 
One thing I wrote down real quick about this section was like, I just love King's writing style because he writes exact, and maybe this is me reading him since I was a child, but I was gonna say he writes exactly the way that I would think. So like one example I wrote down, um, uh, like the idea seemed to come into his mind all at once, perhaps on one of those endless days after George died, was murdered. Like just an afterthought, like, wait, actually this is what happened. <laughs> or. And if a car had been coming, he would have been dead meat, just like Georgie. Like it's still, it's always like popping in there in these random afterthoughts and things like that. And I just find yeah. that interesting. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, he write, yeah, he writes the way you would think, uh, and I like that. And I think it's because he's thinking it as he's writing it, so uh, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and like, yeah, I, I actually highlight that too. That right after Georgie died, he goes murdered because he has that conversation with Audra where he says, uh, "You knew Georgie died." Did I tell you he was murdered? That made me think of that. Immediately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's like, no. And then, and then <clears throat> up Mile Hill again. I hate that cool place. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood. Didn't they show us up Mile Hill? Uh, yeah. And it wasn't like a hill. It was just a road. I, I mean, I thought it was the. I thought it was the hill that goes up, like that meets where the canal is at the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand what up Mile Hill. Means. I always had a problem with that. Name. It's a big hill. <laughs> yeah, I mean, aren't they all? Aren't all hills up Mile? I, I oh, yeah, I don't know. Um, you think too much, Bill. No, no, that wasn't the problem. The problem was he imagined too much. <laughs> and guess who makes his appearance in part in? Uh, I guess section six. Um. Mr. Keene. Oh, yes, yes. Is he in other works of King? He, uh, yes. <laughs> um, he's mostly in this one, but we just did uh, 11 And he spends about three months in Derry. And uh, Mr. Keene, on first read, it's a complete ass to him. Not very nice. But uh, I don't know. Uh, on the second impression, he's not as bad as he came off. Of the, the main character, Jake, hates him and thinks he's a total dick. So, like, you're reading it thinking he's a total dick. But then when you read it again, it's like, well, he's not that bad. It's almost like the character overreacted to him. Mm. Yeah, um, that was the impression that I got was like, you know, he's not the nicest guy, but that's dairy. People aren't friendly. And I think Jake expected him to be like, oh what's wrong how can we help you that's so bad for you like you know what I mean he was like oh that right. sucks your medicine's over like, there get out of my face right you're <laughs> gonna shit your pants here you go don't do it in the store yeah <laughs> um yeah so we wanted to see what he was like in this book if he was an asshole in this one too and uh well he's direct I don't know that I call him an asshole but he's he's the one that's trying to get Eddie off the big drugs so I don't, is he trying to get off? <laughs> he's trying to get Eddie off him. I don't know if Eddie. Well, yeah, because he's talking about how he doesn't. He feels bad. It, like it's so cheap because it's just parent. water, and he feels bad charging him, and he could charge him more, and he doesn't. And you know, his asthma medicine is nothing but tap water. Yeah, I, don't, I guess the fact that I mean, yeah, I guess it's good that he's not charging her an arm and a leg for something that you can literally get out of your sink, but. He, the fact that he's still giving it to her, I didn't take that as he was trying to get Eddie off of it. But I don't think that that he's enabling her to an extent. In my opinion, I think that's her forcing him to do for Eddie because she wants Eddie to believe he's sick too. Yeah. Now there is probably something to be said about like you know he <laughs> shouldn't do that. Like he could uh, report her. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, <laughs> this is dairy, so I don't know how that works. <laughs> Would, who, yeah. Mr. Keen? Yeah. Well, I, I, at the, I guess you would say it's not hurting anyone, so he's hoping that you know it, it'll work itself out. Yeah. Then mm-hmm. having the kid go to social services or something over an aspirator. Psychologically, though, it does hurt Eddie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But losing his mom would hurt worse, wouldn't it? I don't know. Yeah. Well, well and CPS was around. I guess that yeah. depends on what. Yeah, that could go either way. It's just yeah. very, I like how. Like, um, go ahead. 
sorry, with, with all the stuff in this book that's like kids coming to school with bruises because their parents had beaten them and stuff. I was like, where where was child protective services at this time? Where was like social services? And it just it didn't exist yet. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. it did in like the seventies. We went through this in the last book. Yeah. So I'm I maybe he had no one to tell. Even if what he wanted to. What is so it? Women's... Prob- what was that? Okay. Women's uh, rights were the nineties, is that right, Amber? Yeah, the mm-hmm. Violence Against Women Act was enacted in nineteen ninety four, I think. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. what made domestic violence illegal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think so if you were they, beating your kid in the fifties, that wasn't no thing. Whatever yeah. the the teacher said, it was a teacher or the cop. I can't remember. I think it was a teacher who said like, it happens in the house and they handle it in the house, and that's just the way it is. And like I think that was very true. <laughs> oh yeah, the yeah. one teacher said she. The one teacher said she reported it, and they were like basically told her to stay the fuck out of it, unless you don't want your job anymore. Yep. Like wow. Uh, I think I'd have quit my job, but you know, it, it was a different time. So, uh, thinking about all that, maybe Mr. Keene was doing the best he could. Very yeah. true. <laughs> well, I'm interested because I know there's more Mr. Keene in this book. And I'm interested if I don't, because in 112263, I didn't like him, but I don't, I don't remember getting that impression from this book. I think he's actually a, a almost an anti hero. Mm hmm. Uh, and what he's trying to do. He's trying to save Eddie from a, you know, a life of useless pills, I guess you would say. Right. Instead of, and he could easily just look the other way or charge them a buttload of money. Like, he's not being very dairy-like, which is surprising. <laughs> yeah, so Bill takes silver, they save Eddie. Kind of running through that. They become, I like how I don't know where it is. He talks about the silence wasn't awkward in that they became friends. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah, I had that highlighted somewhere. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. It's a cool way to look at it. And I probably, you know, the more I think about it, the more that's probably more true than, than you know, really thought of. I also forgot that the seven of them weren't, I mean, I knew Ben didn't have any friends, but I guess the other six weren't really friends exactly. Like they were, like two or three would hang out at a time and then they all come together. Yeah. Well, I think it was, yeah, I think it was Bill and Eddie. Richie, Richie and, and Bev knew each other. I don't know if they were friends. Well, they went, didn't they go to the movie? Or that was, no, I'm getting that confused now, I think, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Richie from the Ditchy and Bevy from the Levy is after this, right? Right, right. That's what I was thinking of. That's in the book that we just read. Yeah, he runs into Richie and Beverly in the other book. But I think it, it's like nine months from now. From now in the book. Uh, and you forget, like... yeah. At one point he says... Or, or worse, worst of all, it could have been the man whose business was murdering kids might have gotten one or both of them as he had gotten George. Like, y- you kind of forget they're, they're living with this looming mm-hmm. child murderer hiding around every corner. So everything they do is, is you know, and they end up confronting it head on. But, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an overall arching, I don't know, horribleness that they have yeah. to live. There's, there's, I guess it's a, there's always that anxiety it never goes away well, and even when it does i was gonna say yeah it kind of never can go away because even if they're not in fear of this uh who they think is a person killing all these children they're still in fear of what they can sense of this monster who's actually killing all these children <laughs> wait say it again so, like, all of them know that there's something bad there. Like, they either see it or they can sense it or they, you know, they have some kind of encounter. So, it's like the the fact that there's a quote-unquote killer person going around, like, killing children is like an afterthought. Because it's like, oh, yeah, there's a bad guy out there. But they kind of already all know that and they're afraid of the real bad guy all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, it's like unrelenting. Yeah, that was my point. Like, if, if you're living with this constant horror whether it's in your face or just in the background but mm-hmm. they kind of they kind of put it in their face 
Yeah, and, and like, so each one of them has had an encounter with Pennywise. So does every kid in Derry have some encounter? Because it sure seems that way. And then that's what makes I'm me wonder fucking... why, yeah, like, why not, why do some survive? It's like Maybe he's, he's just with... not hungry? Hey, he's playing with his food. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wrote that down earlier, too, because I said, like, quickly, I had said something about how right away Ben can sense, like, when he sees him on the canal, he can sense that he's evil. Like, he doesn't go up to him. He's kind of getting hypnotized by the balloons, but he doesn't immediately walk up to him. And I said, like, why would it matter anyway whether or not your food runs away if you're just intending to kill it? Like, that whole, like, luring and teasing thing is kind of confusing unless, like you said, he's just playing with his food. He's building their fear up because that's what he feeds them. True. But then, yeah, I'm getting too hung up on that. I'm like, but then he gets away, so it doesn't matter. (laughs) Well, they're still terrified. Yeah. Next time they see him, they're going to be even more scared. That's a good point. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have a lot about Bill. Bill's like Silver and then Eddie going to the store, or Bill going to the store for Eddie. And then the yeah. photograph. Well, I feel like half of Bill's section isn't even about Bill. It's yeah. About it's like you get a lot about like Georgie and still Ben and uh, Eddie's song. Yeah, so. that's true. I like how Bill, uh, every time he goes in Georgie's room, he pictures Georgie in the closet in his galoshes. I can see that. something that actually movie. happened in the movie? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Did it? I don't, mm-hmm. oh, I don't remember. It's been a no. while since I've watched I it. I remember Georgie in the basement. I don't remember uh, Bill seeing Georgie. Maybe. I don't know. I think in the remake, I'm pretty sure he is in the room. Something happened. I can picture him. Maybe it's just, I don't know. I can picture Georgie in this, the orange, I mean, the yellow raincoat and hat. Right, right. Yeah. Georgie among the shirts and pants still neatly hung in there. A Georgie dressed in a rain slicker covered with red splotches and streaks. A rain slicker with one dangling yellow arm. His eyes would be blank and terrible. The eyes of a zombie in a horror movie. When he came out of the closet, his galoshes would make squishy sounds as he walked across the room toward where Bill sat on his bed. A frozen, a frozen block of hair. Yeah. Again, I can picture that completely. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He's real good at that. Um, What's funny is, like, even when I have thoughts like that, like, I don't ever indulge them into that detail where it's like, there could be something in that closet. I'm going to move on now. Not like, imagine if that thing came out and walked over to me and what would it look like next? <laughs> Yeah, not yet. Now, on the night after meeting Ben Hanscom, Bill opened the door of Georgie's closet, feeling himself, as always, to meet the sight of Georgie himself standing in his bloody slicker among the hanging clothes, expecting, as always, to see one pallid, fish-fingered hand come pistoning out of the dark to grip his arm. Yeah, I, I can feel that that mm-hmm. error right there. I can picture it. Uh, he's, so, he's ridiculously good at making me picture stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... There oh, yeah, were repeated mentions of like things being haunted to like uh, oh I think there was one in Ben's section that I can't remember but on that same well at least it's the same page for me of the part you just read the room was so full of George's presence that it felt haunted and I feel like that just like all ties back in with the dairy interlude one too yeah I mean his dad tried to get rid of the shit and his mom freaked out on him so yeah they kind of have no choice but the, and and I was I was noticing that like in the movie his dad telling Bill to stop he like just stop Georgie's dead let him let him be dead stop trying to like look for him but in the book it's the complete opposite he, he's uh, yeah. well it, it, no I said that wrong I don't think his dad it's his mom that's like Trying yeah, to keep he does him say alive. that. He's like, could you imagine if your mother saw this? Like, and in the movie, I didn't. I don't think I understood exactly what he meant by that. But reading this is like, oh god. Yeah. Like he tried to throw some stuff out, and she, th- you know, that is. So anyway, uh, last but not least, we have Eddie Quicker and um. Oh. My God, uh, what a horrible, what a horrible life. Reaction to all of that was so. Uh, it pissed me off, honestly. Like, oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Who's him, reaction? Like Chief Barton, 
And he said, like, I hope the disappearance of, of Eddie will not cause unnecessary fears. <laughs> Uh, I want to emphasize. Oh yeah, I want to emphasize that we log 30 to 50 missing person reports on minors each and every year. <laughs> like, like that makes it better. <laughs> yeah. Most up alive and well within a week of the initial report. I'm like, I call BS on that too. Like, just stop. He knew he was lying when he said that. Yeah. Uh, I think. Um, yeah, there's a part. Oh, here it is. There was three school of thoughts. Um. Some people felt that the murder of his brother wasn't related to the murders of Betty, Cheryl, Matthew, and Veronica. Others claimed that they had been killed by one man and the other two were a copycat killer. A third thought that the boys had been killed by one man, the girls by another. So, wait, so people, so the chief must be one of the, so people are out there thinking that there's like five serial killers running around this little town. Well, it right. <laughs> like, how is it better to make them think that the like none of the killings are related to each other, and you have five different people yeah. doing those killing people? That's, that's so much worse. One killer, yeah. It's like where, I, I don't understand the thought process there. <laughs> like, oh no, there's no serial killer. They were all killed by different people. It's like, oh, oh, no big deal. <laughs> I, I wrote this down where I said. I was like, Dare, you've got to be kidding me. I was like, even the police are trying to explain it away or cover it up like everyone in the town doesn't already know how bad things are. I said, furthermore, why would you dig up Dorsey just to prove the stepdad is responsible when there are other crimes actually being committed and they didn't do an autopsy when this happened in the first place? Like, it's like you can't go back and try to cover up your shitty police work because people are more people are dying now to look for an excuse when you could actually be looking for the real perpetrator. <laughs> so is that... Is that what happened? They, they, the cops just didn't care until Mill Prepa started dying, and then they had to. Then they looked a little deeper. Yes, like, and I don't, how did says, this kid get buried without the dad getting arrested the first time? Because he went to the damn hospital with. That that was my point. That, that was my whole point. I was like, nobody cared, cared until they needed to find an excuse to not look for the real killer now. And so they're like, oh, it was that guy. He was a bad dad. He killed all the other kids too. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I know. Cleared in the uh, investigation of the others. Like now, well, I mean. That would have been nice if it was, but he didn't kill any of them. Well, Plus, killed. Chief even says, I wrote this down, I think it looks much more serious than we first supposed, don't you? No, it's it's like, ah, yeah. Wait, so a kid getting beat and murdered wasn't serious? Exactly. That's why I'm like, I hate this police so much. <laughs> well, and also, game. the medical, like, the people in the hospital who looked at this child and was like, Oh yeah, these could be, you know, this break could be from him falling off a ladder. <laughs> I you're yeah. seeing an autopsy that it wasn't like how did you how did you miss that the first time around? They must not have like, done an autopsy. <laughs> like every article ends with Chief Borton decline comment. Chief Borton decline comment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chief Borton should go to jail. Yeah. yeah. At least negligence. So yeah, yeah he declined comment and then literally the next article they're arresting the stepfather. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's some point here where they're talking about Beverly, and I skipped over it, where she calls him her stepfather, and I did not remember that at all. I thought it was her dad. No, I knew it was a stepdad. Where's her mom? I don't know. I think that, I don't remember what part it's in, but it's saying, like, the stepdad kicks her in the rear and yeah. he's like, go do yeah. those dishes like your mama said. But I, for That's some exactly reason, I always thought her mom about. was dead. I think the mom is there. I think she's just negligent. She's not, she doesn't make an appearance in the book at all. Like, like she's missing well, her. Not her do gone. you know that for sure? Like, I don't remember 100%. We haven't gotten to Bev's part yet. Obviously, I don't know that for sure. But Yeah, she might be. Maybe. I don't remember. remember. I, I don't feel remember like in the her. movie, though, it definitely, like, the mom is not around. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot missing. From Even the if movie. she's there, I think it's definitely implied that she doesn't do anything. Yeah. I mean, the kid told his teacher, Daddy had to take me up because I'm bad, and nothing happened to that. Like, like, he comes in with black eyes and broken, like, like you were saying, and nobody does anything. Or... Because the police don't want to get involved. So I, don't I, I don't understand why, but... Even if it's the... Because family stuff stays in the family, as was the attitude, I guess. 
kind of like you know and, and that's how people you, get killed yeah when you beat yeah. your wife it's, that's not my business that's between them they're like she married him you know i don't know <laughs> real it's quick like, uh, oh, sorry go ahead like they were property instead of people that's exactly <laughs> like <laughs> yeah um the Dairy News mentioned that Richard Macklin, the dad, stepdad of Eddie, uh, confessed to beating his stepson to death with a recoilless hammer. Oh, yeah. Oh, where have we seen that before? <laughs> Who, uh, I did highlight that, and I, again, forgot what that means. What was the It's like a one? little sledgehammer, like a tiny right. sledgehammer. It doesn't bounce back, basically. Yeah, he's a big fan of those things, huh? <laughs> the uh, last book we read, um, somebody beat people to death with a recoilless hammer as well <laughs> oh, uh, that was yeah. harry's dad, dad right mm-hmm frank <clears throat> i feel like jake should have beat him with the recoilless hammer. right well he killed him so that's you know yeah but he shot him. that's so <laughs> painless um spoiler alert uh oh true well oops <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just it. All ten murders remain unsolved. I didn't get anywhere near ten, so I don't know. I was thinking that too. Out of the names I wrote down, I was like, "That's not ten, but whatever." I'm gonna go I'm back gonna and write like that later. Five. So yeah, I mean, so there's ten murders in uh, what a year, year and a half, and nobody's uh, worried about that. It's normal. <laughs> yeah, it's a, he does say like there's a culture of you know turning the other way or something like that. And then I find a body, and it's not Eddie Corker. Or Dorsey. Wait, no, Eddie's the missing one. Yeah, it's not Eddie. Yeah. Did they say who that body was? Or did they just... Um, I don't remember. No, I have to look. Oh, 1960s, that... he's been missing for 19 months. So he disappeared in 57. Okay. Wait, no, 58. 19 months. Early 58. Middle of 58. And then they jumped to 67, uh... So, do we really think that he committed suicide? I don't think he did. Eddie? No. Macklin. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. I, I saw, he not. said, I saw Eddie last night. He was dead. So, I think Pennywise. So yeah, I was thinking that too. Yeah. I don't know why. Well, that would be out of the cycle, though. Yeah. It was. That's true. Oh, that's he would have been asleep by then, right? That was in what '67. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, no. no, no, that was 19. Yeah, '67. I mean, maybe he yeah. did see his ghost and killed himself because he was freaked out. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if that had anything to do with Pennywise. Yeah. Like, like are there still hauntings when Pennywise is not there? I mean, Pennywise ever not there technically. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, but then we get to Eddie's death. I like that first first sentence. Eddie Corcoran was dead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah he, right. You know, like, let, let's just start with that. Yeah. He's After not, all he's these dead. articles of going back and forth, it's like, no, he's dead. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they spent 20 pages of news articles where he's missing or dead, and you don't know if the dad did it. And you're like, oh yeah, he's dead. <laughs> let's just let's just forget all that stuff I wrote before that. He's dead. And it kind of does fit with the theme of the book so far, though. It's like, yeah, we, we know what happened to Eddie. <laughs> right. Uh, Eddie, and Eddie was the creature from the Black Lagoon. I don't know if you guys know what that looks like, but it's like... I don't. But I was telling you this the other it's day. It's like a Godzilla thing with, you know, man-sized with the spikes and the tail and stuff. Yeah, that's kind of what I was picturing. Like a big, just a big black, like, mass thing coming out of the water. Yeah, it's, it's got, like, dinosaur spikes on its back and stuff like that. <laughs> um, Ali, I was actually reading this part at work the other day, and it was, like, <laughs> kind of surreal to go back and forth between, like, him running for his life with the creature behind him, and I think I was at Greeter, so it was, like, like all of a sudden the creature, like, grabs him and it's like, oh, hi, how are you today? Like, oh, like, I'm almost screaming out loud. <laughs> <laughs> or if, like, you get too invested in it and someone comes up and they're like, hi, I need to see a teller. And it's like, oh, ah, okay. oh, yeah. Right. Oh, my God. Someone taps you on the shoulder and you scream. Yeah. Uh, so they made, um, Eddie's mom apparently knew what her husband did to him, to Dorsey. 
he says that, well, you know, it was kind of ambiguous to that point. Like, there was a chance she had some redeeming qualities, but not after that. Well, it seems like not only does she know, she was, like, in, uh, complicit because she was like, I don't want to go to jail either. Yeah, he says that. Yeah. After what happened to Dorsey, you want to go to jail, woman? Like, well, well, yeah. I mean, she should have... I mean, she should have reported him for the, for the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I guess you could go back for an adaptation. Never should have fucking been anywhere near that guy, but whatever. Um, he, what's the kissing bridge? Is that the one? Is that where Adrian died? Yeah, I think so. He didn't go into the kissing bridge tonight. He had no urge. So the, I guess the bridge connects the canal to the high school sign, whatever that is. Bassey Park, maybe? Maybe, yeah. I need to look at a map again. <laughs> you heard Lord stories in the playground at school about the queer... Oh, um, no. Well, that doesn't really help. Um, I like how it's just like, he accepted them without... He accepted the stories without question and moved on. Like, like he didn't really care about that part. No, Bassey Park has to be on this side because he doesn't cross over. And he's in the park when he... Oh, yeah, because he's looking at the canal. That's right. It pulls in, It comes out of the canal. Yeah, and he almost gets away, but he trips on the bench. And he does something, and then he runs. Oh, he starts sliding. Oh, he grabs his, his ankle. and starts pulling him down into the canal, and he's like, mm-hmm. freaks out, kicks it away, finds his strength, runs up, runs oh. away, and then and then it's cha- it's not chasing it. It's one of those things like 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 the monster in the basement, like like don't look back. You know it's back right. there. If you, look, if you look back, you're gonna. You know, like Schrodinger's cat, you're gonna make it exist. Uh, At first, I almost thought that's how, like, what the key was. Like, if you don't look back, then you're gonna survive. Like, just keep going. But Ben looks back his entire section. Like, he's like, I look back every few minutes, my whole way home, to make sure I was safe. So I was like, Nope, that's not it. <laughs> well, maybe because Ben was safe. If, if it, you know, if <laughs> it was coming true. after he's him and gone. he looked back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think Eddie looking back kind of sealed his fate mm-hmm. it was almost like he had a chance until then right that was yeah. the impression I had is that you with the bird ever? yeah sorry <laughs> my god <laughs> um, uh, one thing real quick right when he sees Eddie uh, that that's where he talks about the floating again so he says Eddie tried to scream waves of gray shock rolled over him and he had the curious sensation that he was floating but it was not a dream he was awake so in this sense, it seems like he knows he's awake because he's not floating. Like floating is the determination of what's real or not. Like if it's floating in the wrong direction, it's not real. If you're floating, then you're dreaming. Like, so this is real, well, but it's also right. not real. Most people don't float in real life. So. Yeah. It's just, That's I true. never realized how much they, he uses that word float or floating. <laughs> you know, it's like obdurate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> forgot about that word uh they that's not dorsey i don't know what it is but that's not dorsey um yeah and, and so he almost gets away he what trips on the park bench and then the thing has him and that's the end of eddie although where's his body why do they never find it um it, it seems like this one's dragged back to the canal yeah well it's definitely dragged to the canal because that's what mike finds he finds the grooves later on yeah. So maybe he takes the body back to the sewer for some reason. I don't know why. For me, uh, Mike's was the creepiest part. Not only the bird, but he 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 comes across like the bloody cloth and the park bench that's like askew because he tripped over it, and then the right. grooves leading down. You're like, oh man. And the knife. He finds the knife. Don't forget that. <laughs> yeah. What was the knife? It was oh, Eddie's. Yeah, oh, the Eddie's knife. Area. Was that even in Eddie's part? I don't remember the knife. I don't, I don't remember to be honest, like but I think it was just added in later, almost. Yeah, and then yeah, I mean, at that point, he's got to know. I, I, I mean, I think he says that he knows at the end, but like as soon as you see a knife with EC and blood, you're like, he's got to know that Eddie's been missing for however long at that point. Well, no, but I like, think that was that was the day that Eddie went missing, so he didn't realize until later what yeah. that was. Yeah, because yeah. no, they say. The parents didn't even report Eddie missing until like 48 hours later. And if Mike found it the morning after it happened, there wasn't even a report. Yeah, exactly. 
and the tattered bit of cloth with a drop of blood on it makes Mike remember the bird for whatever reason. So it was Mike with the bird, even though we thought it should have been Stan. It wasn't Stan. You're right, yeah. Well, no, Stan definitely has a bird incident because isn't he bird watching when it happens? He, yes. I don't know. I think I so. We'll find out. It, I don't yeah. remember. I think he was bird watching, but I don't think it was a bird. My other question that I wrote down is like, what made Mike go to the scene of his death in the first place? As he says it's potentially plagued by bad dreams. Like, why does he just <laughs> walk down there? His dad sent him there. No, to the canal. To the, to the ironworks. No, no, no. I'm talking about to the scene of Eddie's death. Yeah, I think it was like leftovers of a dream he had. Yeah, it says, unable to sleep, played by bad dreams, a boy named Mike Hanlon rose soon after the first light on the first full day of summer vacation, blah, 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 dressed in corduroys, hopped on his bike, pedaled toward town, riding on the sidewalks because of the fog. The fog changed everything. Yeah, the fog right right cool. I've, I've never been, like, ridden a bike in a fog where you can't even see the stop sign. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, gave off I- no- I yeah, just his, his dad like, it was like the turtle leading him. Yeah, that's what I that's what I'm wondering is like something definitely led him there. Yeah. See, uh, I don't know what this turtle is that you speak. <laughs> <laughs> the turtle has been mentioned once or twice. Has it? Yeah. Um, well just just the fact that a turtle is something. Well, yeah, they, they, he sees the turtle wax and it he yeah. stares at it and he doesn't know why. Plus um Stan mentions it. Um, the, turtle, the turtle couldn't help, the turtle us. help us. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yo, Stan. Yeah, I find for Stan being the first one that he talks about in the book in regards to like the seven of them, it's interesting that we haven't seen any mention of him at all since then. <laughs> yeah, like, that's, he's really that's a good not point. that important in the group of seven. If well, we've seen every other character and we haven't seen Stan. He hasn't really gotten everybody yet. Although, I guess everybody's been mentioned through other characters except him. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah. that's a really good point. At least even Bev like, has been mentioned. Like, Yeah, I mean, we mentioned yeah. Bev, we mentioned Richie, we mentioned Eddie, Bill, Mike. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Huh. yeah uh, I mean... He mentions it, like, stand super super briefly in this section when he was saying like Mike was oh gosh where is it I was just looking at it too uh, I do remember him because he's listing off the names of the other like boys in their grade right they're, they're people sort of yeah and you would think Stan would be mentioned in there but <clears throat> I like how uh, he calls the Titanic, the, the Kitchener Ironworks, the Titanic ruins. That's exactly what I pictured when he was talking about it the first time. Just mm-hmm. like the smokestack sticking up like the Titanic. But that might be age because Titanic was discovered in the 80s. So it was uh, all over the place back then when he wrote this. Oh, I didn't re- I never thought about that. <laughs> yeah, it was right. I don't know the exact. So people year. didn't know about it before? Well, they no, they knew about it, but they they didn't know where it was in the ocean. Oh. They, they, they spent seventy years trying to find where it sank. Interesting. Uh, and they found it in that Robert Ballard found it in the eighties. And then they were all like, they they show there's a video like they're all celebrating, they're like, yay, we found it. And then someone's like, yeah, there's like a thousand dead people in there, and they yeah. ran real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh yeah. Um. So yeah, he goes. So I mean, really, the only thing left is Mike and the bird. They, and even Mike, he's like, he's here's a piston too big for him to budge, let alone lift. He stepped over it. He stepped over it, and what if I find a skull? He thought, but skull of one of the kids who was here when they were hunting for Easter eggs back in nineteen whatever it was. Like, well, yeah, his kids go to dark places real quick. But that but feels I guess, very legitimate because people died there. <laughs> Yeah, that one, yeah, because he's in the Kitchener Ironworks, and I guess that was the Easter egg hunt, and I didn't put that together the first time I read it. The yeah. Kitchener's where they had the Easter egg hunt, and it blew up, and 88 out of 120 people that died were kids, so... Right, yeah, children. There's, there's a good chance you could find a skull there. Matter of fact. 
you know what I, I, we're, I mean we're basically there now but I was really surprised confused not sure about what Mike's dad I'm like okay clearly he knows that something is not right there so why did he send them there if he knows that and what has he seen there then like what was what was he trying to imply with that yeah I I wrote down the same thing I was like where like why at the very end he's like I don't think I should have sent you there I'm like, then why did you? Like, yeah. were, you, were you testing I, him? Did you know he needed to go there for some reason? Like, I think he was just giving him stuff to do for the summer, like giving him because it, it would give him the days off, no chores today. Why don't you go check this place out? Like, I think he was giving him fun stuff to do. But after Mike came back and he saw, like, he doesn't know what he went through, but uh, he uh, saw the state he was it. in, he was like, maybe yeah. I shouldn't have sent you to, you know, that place where everybody died. He, I think he was just trying to, you know, uh, spark his sense dad. of adventure. Yeah. Because uh, he, he's like, bring me back a souvenir and we'll talk about what you find. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Plus he does say, like, at least not until all this trouble is cleared up and they catch the man who's doing it. So, like, he probably saw how afraid he was and was like, hey, dem- nobody was chasing you, right? <laughs> Which yeah. is not true, but... <laughs> I mean, yeah. he did. Well, he answered properly. <laughs> he said no yeah. people were chasing me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see any people at all. <laughs> like, yeah. That's a neat workaround. <laughs> well, he's not lying. Dad didn't ask a follow-up. I guess he didn't expect to have to on that one. Yeah. His uh, thought didn't go into monsters and giant birds that looked like Rodan. Or, excuse me, did not look like Rodan. Also, was this a coincidence when he says he's in the the smokestack and he says oh god and then feels that force behind him that pushes that hit the bird in the eye that's, I was like I didn't huh? that's the turtle right but he it happens right after he says oh, where is it uh, he says oh god please help or something like that and then it's like right after that and I'm like oh okay interesting it's, yeah uh... it's a uh, please god he screamed and was totally unaware that he had cried out aloud he threw another piece of tile, and this time the throw was more powerful, he felt. the uh, He told the other ones much later, as if someone were behind him at that moment, and that someone had given his arm a tremendous push. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's definitely, like, hey, definitely I'm going to help you out, because you're yeah. important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the turtle, it's the white from the sand. Oh. It's, 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 I just realized, yeah, I'm an idiot. Obviously, there's a reason why these kids are surviving. <laughs> well, it's a short book if they don't, right? Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> not, not that reason, but because they also have the help of the turtle. Like, there is somebody who's looking out for them. Uh, he's not very good at his job, but he's trying. Yeah. I say that much. Because uh, you think the turtle could, like, stop him from coming back every 27 years. Apparently not. Yeah, right. They need to have like a big cosmic fight in space or something. <laughs> Isn't that kind of what? Uh, well, never mind. <clears throat> the bird's tongue was silver. <laughs> its surface as crazy cracked as the surface of the volcanic land, and all, uh, like weird tumbleweeds that had taken temporary root there were a number of orange puffs. So, his tongue looks like it's on a Pennywise suit. I was, I was thinking yeah. that too. I was like, what the heck? That's so strange. I guess that's telling us that that's Pennywise. Yeah, because remember, in the book, it's a gray, silver outfit with orange yeah. pom-poms. Yeah, well, so the new movie, that's what he looks like. Although, I love the Tim Curry look, too. I, have- mm-hmm. I keep getting uh, confused because I forget that I know a lot of the plot. So I'm like, duh, we already know this is Pennywise. Who else would it be? <laughs> right. Oh, and right under that... It says the bird walked back and forth overhead. Tack, tack, tack. Yep. Yeah. There's have you read Desperation, uh, Amber? Or Allie? Anybody read Desperation? Uh, I have, yeah. That no. made me think of Desperation right away. I'd, oh, yeah. I was like, ooh, I know. Because I he wrote Desperation after this. So I was like, I wonder if yeah, he had, had that thought good. in mind. Or if it was like just something that he pulled from a different book to try and tie them together. Well, I have a different theory. Uh, I think what it means is Pennywise and the sheriff in Desperation are from the same place. Mm-hmm. That would um, make sense. 
call. Uh, you need to read the Dark Tower to follow that. Um, <laughs> so this is I, my first. I've been meaning just to some get light to reading. The, yeah, I've been meaning to get to the Dark Tower series. <laughs> so I think they're both Toad Ash monsters. Uh, yeah. Toad Ash is like a space you learn about in the Dark Tower series where all these horrible, evil things come from. <laughs> it's like worlds that exist in between worlds and nothing. You don't want to get stuck in the in between because that's where all the monsters are. Mm. So, so Pennywise and the Desperation thing are monsters that escaped from there. Yeah. So, but what is the tag tag tag? Is like what it's the way the thing talks. It, it's oh. like a it's like a monster inhabiting uh, someone's skin, and it's it's like it has these like spasms. So it's like you know oh, you're all under arrest, and it's like it, like his head like snaps, and he's like tack 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 a lot like that kind of thing. <laughs> well, and so it, it the- ends up. In desperation, it, they basically call him Tack. Like that's his name, oh. the name of the monster in that book. Oh, okay, yeah. I have to read that again. Um, I read it kind of recently. Yeah, but when the birds go in Tack, 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 I'm like, oh god, that, that you know, that I go right to desperation on that one. Oh well, yeah. That also, that's also what uh, goes into the Billy Goat Scruff thing too. Like tap, oh, tap, the tap, back and forth over tap, head, tap, like tap. yeah, who's trip tapping on my bridge. Yeah, and he's waiting him out. <laughs> oh, that was horrible! Like I thought, Mike was gonna be in there for a long time. Yeah. He even has that. And then the too. bird just like flew away for no reason. I didn't really understand what that. Was. The only way he could get him out of the smokestack was for the bird to just leave for no reason. <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of what so I'm saying. Did he get tired of waiting? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it's it's convenient that that happened. But I do think there was something to be said about the fact that he injured him pretty severely. Like, I think the bird was realizing, all right, maybe maybe this meal's not worth it right now. <laughs> yeah, maybe, and maybe because Mike wasn't scared of it anymore. It right. Him. Exactly. Like, it didn't have the fuel, and it wasn't worth it at that point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is interesting that like Mike had to f- fight it essentially to mm-hmm. be able to get away from it, but Ben just ran. Like, <laughs> right. A lot of them just run. They don't really do much until the end or until the middle. <laughs> yeah, a lot of bad shit happens, but they don't really. Uh... <laughs> yes, that's a good point. They do a lot of running. Yeah, that's um, a really good point. And Mike doesn't like his happens so suddenly too. Like he wasn't he was a little afraid, but just because he was at a place where hundreds of people had died, like or whatever, you know. And then all of a sudden he just looks down and it's like, okay, now this thing's attacking you. Yeah. Yeah, he looks in the hole because he couldn't help himself. Like again, you shouldn't have looked in the fucking you know, you should have turned around, you shouldn't have looked in the hole. <laughs> you knew there was something bad in there and it was a what did he I don't know how big this cellar hole was, but he expected, I forget what he expected to see, but there was a giant bird perched in there. Like, how big is this cellar hole? And what is in there? That, that, like you said, I actually read the last, like, nine pages this morning, too. So, like, reading that part was just terrifying. Like, he's just moseying along, being a kid, and all of a sudden, there's this huge, like, gonna kill him bird coming after him. And I'm like, oh, my and, God. And to survive, he has to run in the place that, uh, walking by, he swore he was not gonna run in under any circumstances. Right, right. And then, the, yeah, and the bird's blotting out the light and it's squeezing itself into this dead end. He doesn't even know where the other end goes, but, um, you know, it's like a, on an angle. So it's not going anywhere, but like down, 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 yeah. earth, blocked, down and into the ground. There's not yeah. like, yeah, there's not like a hidden escape under at the other end of that thing. So he, he's got a one way exit and there's one way out is this giant Monsters. bird it was uh you know already tried to pick him up and fly away with them that part was like holy crap i know uh, I think, uh that's why i said he handles that like a champ man i don't know if anybody else would have survived <laughs> i mean that's pure terror when the bird when you're in the air and the bird's grip that's pure that's nothing but pure terror right there uh, like I, I i i cannot i don't know what i would have done but i like but to think i would have been like grabbing its feet and trying to break them or something you know I was Before gonna say he, got he still uh, is fighting back because he says, "Let me go," and like twists away, like he does not give up. Yeah, yeah he does. and that's kind of the turning point for him right there. He uh, he says, "Let me go," and then he gets mad, and I don't remember why. I don't. Th- I think it might even said he didn't know why he was mad. He was just mad at the whole situation. <laughs> I'm not. A, what does he say? I'm not a. Never mind stuff like that. I'm not a rabbit. I'm yeah, not, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna hide here all day. <laughs> yeah, but the bird was gone and I think yeah now that I said that out loud I think because he wasn't scared 
honestly. That had a lot to do with it. Or, you know, you know, do sex mocking though too. So, so like he's probably sitting on the standpipe bench going, How the hell do I get Mike out of there? Plus, it's weird that it responds like when he talks to it. So he's like, that's what he says. Get out of here. I'm going to keep hitting you until you get out of here. I swear to God, I will. And then that's when he kind of like goes away. Well, maybe talking to it. But how, I mean, I can I can see that. That's how he had to deal with it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know. I mean, I don't I don't think it's weird that he talks to it. I just I think it's strange that the bird kind of is like, mm, all right, fine, whatever. I'll go now. <laughs> <laughs> He heard, look, it wasn't even done yet. He turned, me, meaning to uh, walk back to his bike. To run would be to dignify fears. So yeah, that's going. right. And then the splashing sound came again. Mm-hmm. Something was splashing in the canal behind him. And he doesn't turn around. He really wanted to and he doesn't. That's the scene I was talking about where I'm like, I can picture this immediately. It's like that moment where you think everything's fine and then you hear the splash and you're like, I can even hear the music in the scene. <laughs> right, and you hear the splash, you're like, yeah, you're like jumping, you're like, nope, everything's not fine, I'm running. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you spend the whole time telling yourself, there's nothing there, there's nothing there. And then there's like, oh my God, there's something there. Like, that's like your worst fear materialized. Yeah. <laughs> like the hand in the light switch in the basement, there's nothing there, there's nothing there. And then something mm-hmm. grabs your hand. Um. Thought about the blood on the grass, and then he thought about the grooves, which stopped at the edge of the canal. So the thing chased him into the street. I, I missed that part. He heard dragging, lurching footsteps in the grass. And then he wondered like what he... the hell possessed him to come in the first place. <laughs> yeah, the... right. Uh-huh. Right, but his dad told him to go there. I, I still... That's that dad. one, yeah, that one, it's like his dad sent him there. So why did his dad send him there? I don't know. Hey, he's just looking for fun. I, I think, you know, you know, Mike's a black kid in the 50s, so he doesn't have a lot of friends on, you know, I guess. But the scene of a an, a horrible accident where you have no idea what's... They, like, there's so much dangerous machinery and stuff that could collapse at any point. In, in hindsight, <laughs> it probably wasn't the best place to go <laughs> without the Pennywise stuff. Right. <laughs> um... Yeah, he probably could have found a skull. I wouldn't be surprised. He, I feel like he should have now that I, I think about That's it. What, like, yeah, like, I don't... Did they ever clean up? Like, who knows how much stuff is there? Right, has that just been sitting there since 1920? Exploding? Uh, Exploding <laughs> ruins? like it, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I guess the, that's it for this one. 